enabling Office 365 services, exam ref 70-347. Objective 2.1, configure external users sharing. This objective deals with the settings related to allowing people external to your organization's Office 365 tenancy access to content stored within SharePoint Online. There are a variety of sharing options from allowing read and edit access to people with Microsoft accounts to allowing read and edit access to anyone who has the correct URL for a document. This objective covers the following topics. Enable external user sharing globally. Enable external user sharing per site collection. Share with external users and remove external user access. Understanding external users. External users are people who need to collaborate with people in your organization using content hosted on SharePoint Online, but who haven't been provisioned with an organizational Office 365 or SharePoint Online license. The use rights available to external users depend on the features available to the SharePoint Online tenancy with uh, which they will collaborate. For example, if your organization has an E3 enterprise plan and a SharePoint site uses enterprise features, the external user will be able to use and view those enterprise features. External users can perform the following tasks. Uh, they can use Office Online to view and edit documents in the browser. Uh, they can use their own versions of Office to interact with content hosted in SharePoint Online, but they are not eligible eligible for licenses to the tenancies Office 365 Office Pro Plus software. They're able to perform tasks on the site uh, uh, commensurate with their permission level. For example, adding an external user to the members group grants that user edit permissions. They will be able to add, edit, and delete lists, list items, and documents. Uh, they're able to view other site content, including navigating to subsites to which they have been invited and view uh, site feeds. Now, external users are restricted from being able to perform the following tasks. Uh, create personal sites, edit their profiles, view the company-wide news feed, add a storage to the tenant storage pool, enact searches against everything or access the search center, access site mailbox, access Power BI features including Power View, uh, Power uh, Pivot, Quick Explore, and uh, timeline a slicer. Use eDiscovery. Open downloaded documents protected by Azure Rights Management. Uh, it is still possible to open these documents using Office Online, however. Uh, access SharePoint Online data connection libraries. Uh, use Excel services features such as calculated measures and calculated members. Uh, decouple pivot tables and pivot charts, uh, field list and field support, uh, filter enhancements and search filters, and they're also restricted um, from using um, uh, Visio services. So here is the uh, SharePoint Admin Center, and, and obviously when you log on to um, 
Office 365, you're going to be presented with this. Um, this is the, uh, the admin center preview, which is basically the new uh, kind of dashboard on Office 365. Um, so if you go to this uh, uh, part over here, uh, you will see the uh, SharePoint uh, component. And once you click on that, then that's where you're going to get to this um, uh, part of it here. And on the sharing part, on the sharing link, then you're going to get to this sharing outside your organization. And basically, this control how users share content with people outside your organization. Now, um, the the first option over here it's don't allow sharing outside your organization and well the, the it basically uh, means what it says if you have this then nobody will be able to share anything with people outside the organization so uh, you gotta be careful with that because that may be too restrictive but there are many cases in which companies um, management decides that they do not want to uh, allow sharing uh, with anyone else outside the company. Uh, again, it all depends on the company, uh, the company policy. The second option is um, allow sharing only with the external users that uh, already exist in your organization's directory. So uh, many companies uh, create contact email addresses for their partners. Uh, and people that they want to collaborate with. So if you create a content account, a content account is nothing more than uh, basically an account in Active Directory, in, in this case would be in the Office um, 365 AD, and uh, the account then has an external email address. Um, so that, that's one option. Uh, you could still share and you know that those are people that you can trust. The third option, which is the one that I have selected here, uh, allow users to invite and share with authenticated external users. Basically what that means is that uh, the person would have to have a, um, uh, a Microsoft uh, ID, whether it is Hotmail or uh, MSN or Outlook, but they need to have some kind of email address actually um, any email address in, in that sense would work. Um, so that's also, you know, another option. It's less restrictive. And, and finally, you have the allow sharing to authenticate external users and using anonymous links, anonymous access links. This is the least restrictive, and it allows people to send anonymous links. This is <laughs> very dangerous, I would say. Uh, I have not seen many companies use this option over here, and I would be very cautious in uh, using this. Um, anyway, so, and uh, you have additional settings over here. For example, this option, um, you can limit external sharing using domains. So basically, you can make a list of domains, and, and you separate the, uh, the domains with the spaces. And uh, that means that you can only share with those uh, people. So that means that if you have a list of companies and partners that you want to share with, you can list those domains there. And uh, this option, which I have selected over here, external user must accept sharing invitations using the same account that the invitations were sent to. So uh, you can send an email to their email address and they will accept that invitation and then you know they're they're able to access whatever you share with them so here's uh, the list of options and the explanation uh, and again as I said don't show um, don't allow sharing outside your organization basically meaning that uh, this option prevents all users on all sites within the SharePoint tenancy from sharing sites or content with external users. So if you have uh, user complaints that they cannot share, you know, content files, anything within a SharePoint site that they created, well, maybe they're not aware that um, uh, 
you know this option it's elected so um, it just need to be aware that as a sysadmin um, allow users uh, who accept sharing invitations and sign in as authenticated users uh, basically uh, as I said choosing this option requires external users um, who have invitations to view content or sites to sign in with the Microsoft accounts such as Outlook.com etc uh, site owners and users with full control permissions are able to share sites with external users. So again, not everybody can share with external users. You need to have uh, to be either a, a site owner or have the full control permission. Um, site owners and users can choose to allow external users view or edit permissions and documents. All external users must sign in with a Microsoft account before they can access the content. Invitations to view content can only be redeemed once uh, and then are tied to the Microsoft account used for access. Uh, after an invitation has been used, it cannot be used by someone else to get access with a separate set of Microsoft uh, account privileges. Now, if you allow both external users who accept sharing invitation and guest links, uh, so this option, it's uh, when you want to allow content to be shared with people who sign in with the Microsoft account as well as allow anonymous guest links. Anonymous guest links allow access without any form of authentication. Just please be aware of that. Site owners, and again, and users with full control permission are able to share sites with external users. Site owners and users with full control permission are able to choose between requiring a sign in or sending an anonymous guest link when sharing the documents. Uh, when sharing the documents, site owners and users can select between granting view and edit permissions, and all external users will be required to sign in with a Microsoft account before accessing the content. Now, if you turn off external sharing, uh, it has the following consequences. Uh, if you disable and then re-enable external sharing, external users who have been granted access to content will regain access. Uh, if you disable and then re-enable external sharing, site collections that have sharing enabled will have sharing re-enabled. If you want to block a specific site collections from having sharing re-enabled, you need to disable external sharing on a per site collection basis prior to re-enabling external sharing. So that means that if you block uh, completely external access because you want to block the external asser, uh, access on a specific site, then you need to go into that site and disable that. When you disable external sharing on a specific site collection, any configured external user permissions for that site collection are permanently deleted. So basically meaning that once this happens, if you decide later on that you want to give those permissions back, then you need to uh, send those invitations again or enable sharing again. Uh, turning off external sharing at the site collection level disable guest links, but does not remove them. Uh, to remove access to a specific documents, you need to disable anonymous guest links. Uh, changes made to external access do not occur immediately and might take up to 60 minutes so um, you have to take this in mind if you want to uh, uh, you know completely remove someone from external access enable external user sharing per site collection so only SharePoint online administrators are able to make changes to the SharePoint online tenancies external user uh, sharing settings um, site collection administrators are allowed to configure sharing settings on a per site collection basis as long as external user sharing is set to one of the following options. Uh, so again, what that means is that uh, an administrator of a, of a site collection can basically uh, go and share content if content is allowed on the global uh, tenancy. If uh, sharing is disabled globally, then obviously administrators of those uh, uh, SharePoint sites won't be able to allow users. Um, the sharing options are uh, at a site collection level are similar to those that are available at the SharePoint online tenancy level and that that's seen on the next screen. Well actually, so actually before you need to share anything uh, you need to go to your site collections 
and uh, from the site collections then you are going to go to the sharing tab up here and um, once you get there uh, you're gonna come to the uh, sharing uh, window over here and again so these options are similar to what we've seen at the tenancy level the first thing is don't allow sharing uh, outside your organization uh, allow external users who accept sharing invitations and sign in as authenticated users and then allow both external users who accept sharing invitation and anonymous guest links um, these options have the following properties and again so we have talked about uh, this properties is kind of similar um, the, the properties are similar at the tenancy level and at the, uh, the, the site collection level uh, so um, it's important to remember these after sharing is appropriately configured at the SharePoint online tenancy level and at the site collection level there are three basic methods that allow you to share content with external users. Um, you can share an entire site and invite users to sign in using a Microsoft account, uh, including Office 365 accounts from uh, separate organizations such as, you know, uh, workplaces or schools, etc. You can also share individual documents by inviting external users to sign in using a Microsoft account. Uh, or you can send users a guest link that allows uh, users external to the organization access to each individual document that you want to share anonymously. So here is the, uh, when you sign into Office 365 for the first time, um, you're going to get to the site, and then if you want to share a site, you just go to this, this uh, um, site page over here, and uh, and then you select the site that you want to share. Uh, once you come to uh, the site again, you click on share, and this is where um, it allows you to give those um, to share the site to include either an email address or look for the person that you want to share. On the uh, share site uh, dialog box, which is uh, shown, you provide the name, actually that I'm going to show that next, provide the name of the person with whom you want to share the site, you uh, specify the permission level and then click share and you can choose between the following, um, Excel services uh, viewers, view only, team site members, uh, they have added uh, team site owners, obviously they have full control, and the team site visitors, they have read permission. And uh, so here is that window uh, where you can either share, uh, invite people, uh, and then you type in the email address of the person. And uh, as soon as you put the email address, it's going to tell you that it is outside your organization. And or share with, this is, you know, to share with uh, people within the organization. Um, you can send an email invitation and, and again those are the level of permissions that we just talked about. So once you share with people you can come here to this uh, share with window and then you can see um, who you're sharing with and if you want to remove someone from here that you select it and then you'll be able to remove it and there's some other options within the email everyone and the advanced option which uh, I will show it uh, in a bit in the demo. Um, sharing a specific document. Uh, there are two ways to share a document. Uh, sharing with an external user who must authenticate and sharing through an anonymous guest link, which we have just talked about. So you come within your, your, your site uh, and you go to documents. You select the documents that you want to share and once you click on this ellipsis over here then uh, you have um, the options to uh, to share the document you can also click on the uh, share tab over here on the top and so again once you go to the share part of a document then you have the invite people where you can type in the email address uh, the get link like if you want to send a link uh, if you are um, sharing that link with people, uh, share it with, and again, there is an option over here to require sign-in. If you don't uh, 
check this box then when you send the link then if you have anonymous access then people are able to access that link without uh, providing any uh, any authentication uh, later if you want to uh, remove external user access uh, you can revoke external user access to a site only after a user has accepted the invitation um, so you you come to the um, SharePoint um, site, go to site settings, and on the site settings, you're going to go to uh, users and permissions right here. And there, you're going to see the users that have been uh, granted access, and from there, you can remove those users. Uh, it is important to know that there is no way at the SharePoint online tenancy level. Uh, to determine all of the sites to which an external user has been granted access. Uh, it is necessary to view the settings for individual sites to determine if a specific external user has been granted access to the site. Uh, there is also no method at the SharePoint online tenancy level to determine which documents have been shared externally. Um, and there's an exam tip over here. It says, remember that the sharing settings configured at the SharePoint uh, online level, uh, that means the uh, tenancy level, will overwrite the settings that can be configured at the site collection level. So if you uh, disable sharing uh, from the outside at the tenancy level, then obviously all the site collection sites that have share, uh, that, that will be revoked. Okay, and, and also important to note about this this uh, note over here is that if there is a, a specific user from a company, um, let's say that the user has been terminated from that company or for whatever reason, and many users from different sites have been sharing content with that user, so the best way is to actually go to the peoples and users uh, uh, component look for that user remove that user completely and, and that way the user will be uh, eliminated from the site and if later on you need to um, reshare a specific content then you can do so alright so let's take a look at a, a, a short demo so here is my SharePoint admin center which uh, we will show how to get there and then if I go to my site collections here is the list of all the sites that I have on my tenancy and if I select a site they notice how um, I have a lot of things that becomes available over here and one of them is the uh, this sharing the, uh, uh, option over here so if I click on this this will bring me to the uh, sharing that we were just uh, that we were talking about um, and, and notice how uh, anonymous access links aren't allowed on your organization so what that basically means is that I have disabled uh, anonymous access links on my tenancy level and therefore it, it won't be uh, we won't be able to send anonymous links at the um, uh, at the site collection level now, so if I want to, uh, so let's go to the uh, settings. Uh, again, I'm on the uh, site collection. And if I go to settings, and uh, notice how I have the site uh, selected. So if I go to um, settings, we are going to come here. There's a whole bunch of options that you can configure over here, which I'm not uh, uh, going to go on detail right now because they are not specific related to uh, related to sharing alright so from within the site collections um, if I want to uh, go to this site so if I click on this site uh, first of all it takes me to the properties of the site and I can see uh, a number of important things like uh, uh, the number of subsites here the administrators uh, the storage usage, the resource usage, etc. Uh, if I click on the link to the site, then I will be taken there. And here there's a number of things. On the left, you have the, the document section 
or at least uh, all the documents that are in this um, in this uh, in this site, um, which actually in, in this case is uh, is not that much anyways. This um, SC over here stands for site collection. So if I want to go back to the parent folder, I just uh, click on the um, site collection over there. And, and most of the magic uh, happens right here. So if I click on page, uh, notice how the uh, menu pops up and there are tons of information that I can uh, uh, configure over here. And um, so uh, so important to uh, to know this thing over here, and and and, and then of course, if I want to share the entire site, then I come over here where it says share, and we've seen this, and here I can uh, invite people. I just type in the email address, and or I can share with people that are uh, within my organization. And again, so you can uh, click on the advanced to uh, see more advanced options, and here you see. Um, you know the different uh, level of permissions that are by default over there um, so like who, who are site team members who are site team owners and, and, and um, uh, team site visitors actually and notice that there's nobody over here but if there was someone then I could go ahead and uh, modify those permissions um, in the action uh, button over here so I can also do uh, a number of things. Uh, send um, uh, an email to select the users you have app users, uh, remove users from the group, and, and on and on and on. So uh, tons of configuration that can be done from this um, uh, from this site. All right, so this uh, conclude this objective. Um, So, external users are people with whom Office 365 SharePoint Online content can be shared. External users can authenticate with a Microsoft account, including an Office 365 account that is not part of the organization's tenancy. At the global level, you can configure an option for um, a block sharing to external users allow external users who have authenticated with Microsoft or allow users who have authenticated with a Microsoft account and who have been provided with an anonymous link. Uh, site owners and users who have full control permissions uh, on a site are able to share sites with uh, external users. Uh, invitations sent to external users remain valid for seven days. Uh, sharing settings uh, configured at the SharePoint online tenancy level determine the sharing options available at the site collection level. If sharing is blocked at the tenancy level, it is not available at the site collection level. And finally, sharing settings uh, configured at the site collection level determine the sharing options available, available at the document level. Objective review. How many days does an invitation to access shared content sent to an external user uh, um, from an Office 65 SharePoint site collection remain valid before it expires? And the answer is seven days. You want to block users uh, sharing link and require all external users access and share content to authenticate using a Microsoft account. Which of the following steps can you take to accomplish this call with a minimum amount of administrative effort? And the answer is B. You restrict sharing to authenticated users at the SharePoint online tenancy level. Question three, you want to allow users in your organization's Office 365 tenancy to email links that will allow anonymous access to a specific document hosted in a specific site collection, which the following setting must be configured to allow this to occur. Choose two. Each answer forms part of a complete solution. Uh, so A, you configure the allow both external users who accept sharing invitations and anonymous get links option at the site collection level. 
and D, you configure the allow both external users who accept sharing invitations and anonymous guest links option at the site online tenancy level. Question four. In most circumstances, you want to allow users in your organization to be able to send anonymous links to people outside your organization to document hosted inside collections in your organization's Office 365 SharePoint online tenancy. However, you want to ensure that anonymous links can't be used for documents hosted in a specific site collection. Documents in the site collection should be able to uh, be shared with external users who have authenticated with a Microsoft account. Uh, with this in mind, which of the following settings should be configured to accomplish this goal? Choose two. And each answer performs part of a complete solution. Uh, so the answers are A, configure the allow both external users who accept sharing invitations and anonymous guest links option at the SharePoint online tenancy level. And um, uh, C, configure the allowed external users who accept sharing anonym, anonymous sharing invitations and sign in as um, authenticated users option at the site collection level for the specific site collection where you want to block anonymous links. And uh, question five, after sensitive documents were leaked from your organization, you want to block all sharing of content hosted in SharePoint Online to uh, people external to your organization. Which of the following steps should, uh, could you take to accomplish this call with a minimum amount of administrative effort? And the answer is D. Configure the Don't Allow Sharing Outside Your Organization option at the SharePoint Online tenancy level.